reading <coughs> a short reading from the book of, of forgive me of the book of the Hebrews. Problem is, I can't see it. There we go. For we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continue to offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do the good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Just a bit earlier than that bit where we came in, he talks about a high priest, carries the blood of animals into the most holy place. This is a sin offering. But the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. So think back for a moment for me. Think back to that very moment when you said, oh, hang on. This Jesus might actually be who he says he is. Can you still remember that day? How, without being too personal, how, what was it like? John Wesley said he felt his heart strangely warmed. Did anyone feel that? Sorry? Heated. Did anyone, be honest, if you can please, think, oh no, what does this all mean? No? Did anyone, you did, thank you, David. Yes? Yep. Yep, but there's also, I think, this kind of idea of what does it all, how is it going to work out? What does it mean now in the life that I live? I've gone from living my way, according to my philosophy, to suddenly finding there is a God out there. And I did need help. And I was lost. And I did need a saviour. Like Jess was saying this morning with Paul, Paul came to realise that the very law that he thought would save him is the very law that would condemn him. It would bring him front and centre in a holy God who would say, well, you kept all of them, every one of them. If you break one, you break the law. So there is a judgment. There is an offering needed. That's why this is here. When he says he offers a sin offering. And then he has to burn the body because it's the blood shed in the ancient idea of Hebrews within which was the forgiveness of sins. So that's why Paul calls it dung. He said, I strove and strove and strove. And that that was actually, I was striving, was killing me. It was actually taking away the very salvation I saw. And so then we are called from almost one city to another. And that's what this is getting at. And then we go from wondering about meaning and life to the hope of something beyond this life. And yet we don't yet see it. So we're all theologians in this sense. And all theology means he's thinking God's thoughts after him. And that's why he says here we are looking for a heavenly city to come. This is not an enduring city. It's not our eternal home. It is our home for now. And within which we live. And like we find time goes on. Things happen. Time and circumstance come along. And injustice happens. Pain happens. And then like the psalmist we often cry out. What misery is mine. I am like the one who gathers summer fruits at the beginning of the vine, etc., etc. All these great cries. But at the end, they realize this Hebrew idea of I call to mind. I remind myself again of who you are. And then, so this reading, it calls forth praise. Why does it do that? Because I suppose it takes us back to we were in this place of judgment and loss, like Paul said. And God would send his own son. Look around this church at the I am posters. The I am would give himself to the ones he created. They would crucify him outside the city. They would humiliate him, mock him, crucify him naked. There was no loincloth. The idea was to humiliate you utterly. And he would do that to be this sin offering. So that you Gentiles, me a Gentile, who were lost, could be brought home. We who feared death now know 
We don't have to grieve as others do who say there's no hope. As I said, to, again, sorry to anointing Ellen, this is the point. It says we put off this, which must decay, it's perishable. We just don't know when. But one day we will put this off. And scripture says we will change it for something that's imperishable. It won't wear out. This says we are mortal, we age. Has everyone ever done this? When you walk along the street, you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror and the window and think, is that me? Man, I'm grey. Or you get a link of yourself when you're shaving and you see wrinkles and you start thinking, what's, or the, the worst point of all is when you hear a scream and you run upstairs going, what's the matter? And your wife says, these grey is the grey. And you think, okay, I'm not answering this question right now. Because we age. But it says we will put that off for immortality. And then Peter says, this is kept in heaven. That's the city. That's the call. That's where we're going. That's the eternal call. That's why the sin offering of Christ was made. So it says, therefore, let us continue to offer to God our sacrifice of praise. Let us call to mind, remind ourselves, in the darkest of valleys, I am the bread of life. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am. And again, at the end of the service, if you've not, take the time to sit and have a look and see again, remind yourself, who it is you worship. And so I finish with this. What it does for me is, when we remind ourselves like Paul, how can it not call forth praise? You just sang, you ran after me, you knew I was lost. You came, you found me, you brought me home. You adopted me, you made me your heir with Christ. His righteousness given to us freely. We are his people, you've put us in a family. And family life is not easy sometimes, is it? And we have different, different political opinions, different incomes, different streams, different backgrounds. But all, says Paul, united in one thing. The name of the one we proclaim. So the only way I can do this now is when we used to talk about the Jews would say, come on, well, we Christians would say, come with me to the house of the Lord. Come where we can be together. Where we can read these scriptures. Where we can encourage each other. Where we can find a psalm that speaks in the midst of the suffering, when we see injustice is a psalm that speaks, there's prayer available and there's worship because it calls forth a sacrifice of praise. You see this? It's a sacrifice. As he sacrificed himself, so we sacrifice praise. What does that mean? It means, in a way, sometimes it takes us out of the conditions we're in and we look up and we see the I am and we are grounded and rooted in him for we know the city to which we are called it says that's where Alan's gone let me repeat this Alan Keith Grant we could go on either they are absent from the body and at home with the Lord or they and you and I are pitied above all people for we are denying ourselves things when there's nothing beyond this life or we know the tomb was empty he is risen and he calls us to his, sorry, forgive me. He calls us his own. And he says to the Father one day, here they all are. Those you have given me, and I have lost none of them. He doesn't say, you'll have an easy life. He actually says, if you follow me, you will have trouble. You will have trouble. You will face persecution and mockery. But he says, take heart. I have overcome the world. I am has overcome the world. So I stop there. That this service we've already sang our God holding nothing back so in this next song set with Alan in mind and all those that have gone from this church to glory that have passed from immortality sorry forgive me from mortality to immortality perishable to imperishable can I invite you to give even in the midst of everything that you're enduring a sacrifice of praise because we're going to sing all the room was hushed and still this is what I want my church to be this is, is you follow. And remember what he said to Peter. Peter says, what about all them? Peter says, what is that to you? Sorry, Jesus says, what is that to you if I want them to live? What does he say to Peter then? You, what? Follow me. Our city is not this. It is for now. But it's not our, our full and eternal home. So I may invite you now, please. Can we stand and sing again?
And let's do this as a sacrifice of praise. All the room at the cross. We're going to sing Love Ran Red. There is why. We, that's the praise. This is what he did for you and me. Love Ran Red. Once again, all these three pick up this idea that we proclaim his name. That's why we worship. Thank you.